The next topic that uh, we are going to discuss is um, um, the principle of increase of entropy. Um, perhaps uh, this is the uh, uh, most important uh, concept uh, concerning second law of thermodynamics. The principle of increase of entropy has now come to be recognized as a universal principle and uh, for that reason it is an extremely uh, fundamental uh, idea that uh, comes out of second law of thermodynamics and is of fundamental importance also. So, we will uh, discuss this in detail. So, let us start uh, like this, let us say that we have a thermodynamic system at temperature T and let it have a heat interaction delta Q with the surroundings at temperature T naught. Okay. So, at an instant, so we have a system like this. So, at an instant, the system is at a temperature T and it has a heat interaction with the surroundings of delta Q. It could either receive heat from the surroundings or uh, it could reject heat to the surroundings. Anything is possible, but it has a heat interaction with the surroundings which are at a temperature of T naught. So, it could be like this, it could be like this. Okay. Now, the change in entropy of the system as a result of this process is d s equal to delta q over t plus delta sigma int which is the uh, entropy generation due to internal irreversibility in the system. So, the uh, change in uh, entropy uh, of the surroundings uh, denoted d s surroundings is given simply as d s surroundings equal to delta q surrounding over t naught. Remember, uh, there is simply a transfer of entropy from the system to the surroundings or vice versa. The surroundings are not executing a process, either the surroundings are supplying an amount of heat delta Q or the system is rejecting an amount of heat uh, delta Q to the surroundings. Okay. So, the change in entropy of the surrounding is only due to the entropy transfer. So, it is delta Q surrounding over T naught. And based on our sign convention, delta Q surrounding is equal to minus delta Q cis. Okay. This point is very important. There is only a transfer of entropy between the system and the surroundings. And the system is the one that is executing a process. So, if you uh, combine the entropy change of the system and the surroundings, we get the entropy change of the universe. Okay. So, entropy change of the universe, ds universe is equal to dss plus ds surroundings and uh, if you rewrite this expression, you get this to be equal to this. So, once again there are two terms in this expression for change in entropy of the universe. The first is due to external irreversibility. Notice that the system is at a different temperature from the surroundings when it rejects heat or when it receives heat. When it is rejecting heat, of course, uh, T is greater than T naught. When it is receiving heat, T is less than T naught. But whatever it is, there is an external irreversibility here and there is also entropy generation due to internal irreversibility. So, the entropy of the universe increases as a result of the external irreversibility plus internal irreversibility. So, any change in the entropy of the universe of the system is due to irreversibilities. If there are no irreversibilities, then obviously there is no change in the entropy of the universe. Okay? Otherwise, there is going to be a change in the entropy of the universe. Now, let us look at the various possibilities uh, that we may encounter uh, in this situation. The first uh, possibility is the simplest, no internal or external irreversibility, which means that in this case, in this case, we said this to be 0 and we set t equal to t naught, no external irreversibility. So, this, so this is also equal to 0. Both the right hand side terms are 0. So, entropy of the universe remains the same. Now, let us examine the possibility when we have internal irreversibility, but no external irreversibility. So, which means that we have internal irreversibility, but no external irreversibility. Since delta sigma int is always greater than 0, the uh, entropy of the universe increases in this case. So, you must remember that delta sigma int is uh, equal to 0 or greater than 0. Since we are now saying there is an internal irreversibility, this is positive. So, the entropy of the universe increases. 
Now, the third possibility external irreversibility, no internal irreversibility. Okay. So, in this case, we have external irreversibility. So, that means this is present, but no internal irreversibility. So, this is 0. However, before we can ascertain the sign of this term, we need to again look at two possibilities. One when heat is supplied to the system, another when heat is rejected by the system. Let us look at uh, both these situations. So, system temperature is greater than the surrounding temperature. This means that the system is rejecting heat. So, that means delta Q is negative and the quantity within the parenthesis is also negative. So, if I look at 1 over T minus 1 over T naught, since T is greater than T naught, this is also negative. So, delta Q is negative and 1 over T minus 1 over T naught is also negative. Hence, the product term on the right hand side is positive. So, ds universe is positive. Now, the the other possibility is T is less than T naught. This means, heat is supplied to the system. So, delta Q is positive and 1 over T minus 1 over T naught in this case is actually positive. So, the product term on the right hand side is positive which means that entropy of the universe increases in this case also. So, we have and the last possibility is when we have both internal irreversibility and external irreversibility. In this case, both the terms on the right hand side are uh, non-zero and positive. Hence, the entropy of the universe increases. Okay. So, we have considered all possible cases and we have concluded that the entropy of the universe either remains the same or increases. This is known as the principle of increase of entropy. It remains the same at best. Remember, no internal or external irreversibility is the best possible situation, okay? which means the entropy of the universe remains the same at best or increases. So, this is the principle of increase of entropy. Entropy of the universe always increases or at best remains the same. Now, it, this statement is actually considered to be the second law of thermodynamics by many, uh, many practitioners uh, of uh, different branches of engineering. For mechanical engineers, of course, you know the pedagogy is along the lines that we have followed. Okay? We started with the Kelvin-Planck statement and then we progressed from there and we have finally arrived at the principle of increase of entropy. Actually, these are all equivalent. In fact, we will show that they are equivalent in a minute. We showed Kp and Clausius to be equivalent. So, our development followed Kp statement, Clausius statement, absolute temperature scale, efficiency of a, a Carnot cycle and then we went to entropy, Clausius inequality, then entropy and then from there now we are coming to principle of increase of entropy. So, this, this is a sequence that mechanical engineers tend to follow because uh, we always ask the same question. What is the maximum efficiency of the engine? What is the maximum possible efficiency of the engine? If this is not possible, then what is the maximum possible? So, that is the, uh, that is the path that we have gone down and then finally arrived at this. But um, uh, people in other branches of engineering and even sciences, physicists for example, consider this to be uh, the starting statement uh, of second law of thermodynamics. Okay. So, there is a very interesting footnote here uh, involving something called the Maxwell's demon, which was for long, for about a century, it was actually thought to uh, violate the, uh, uh, the principle of increase of entropy. For example, it was enunciated in 1871 and it was not until 1987 that it was satisfactorily and convincingly resolved. Okay. So, it, it remained like that for about, for more than a century. Uh, and then it was shown eventually that uh, the Maxwell's demon does not violate the principle of increase of entropy. There are certain other examples also where it was thought that this principle is violated, but uh, very careful analysis showed that not to be the case. This uh, some uh, these are mentioned in my textbook. If you are interested, you can look it up. Now, uh, as I said, we have uh, mentioned Kelvin-Planck statement, Clausius statement, uh, definition of uh, absolute temperature QH over TH equal to uh, QC over TC and now we are giving principle of increase of entropy. Are all these the same? 
or they are all equivalent statements or is there a possibility that you know there uh, the, there could be differences among among this for example some engine while some engine uh, say uh, does not violate kelvin planck statement but violates the principle of increase of entropy and so on okay let us take a look at that kelvin planck statement earlier we considered uh, uh, a direct engine that violate uh, that violated the kelvin planck statement so basically it took an amount of heat qh from a reservoir at th converted all of it to work without rejecting any of it now if you so let us just draw the uh, block diagram for that uh, for that engine so this was uh, so this was the engine qh w equal to uh, qh and it was also said that the engine executes a cyclic process otherwise kelvin planck statement would not be applicable so the engine operates in a cycle converts all of the heat to work that is why it violates the kelvin planck statement okay since the engine operates in a cycle that we take that to be the system uh, so since the system executes a cyclic process delta s is zero because s is a property we start and end at the same state so delta s for the system is zero now the surrounding supply a certain amount of heat qh to the engine which means the uh, entropy of the surroundings decreases so it is equal to minus qh over th and we may then write delta s for the universe as delta s system plus delta s surroundings which is negative and clearly this uh, engine violates the entropy increase principle also because entropy increase principle says it can be zero or positive so it cannot be negative so clearly this violates the principle of increase of entropy so an engine that violates the kp statement violates the principle of increase of entropy also the next example uh, is a uh, is an engine reverse engine that violates the clausius statement so basically uh, we have uh, high temperature reservoir and engine e which operates in a cycle i'm sorry so we have a low temperature reservoir tc so this moves a certain amount of heat qc from the low temperature reservoir and without uh, taking any work input uh, transfers it to the high temperature reservoir and while operating in a cycle so again uh, for the system the engine delta s is zero because it is operating in a cycle and the surroundings are supplying an amount of heat qc from a reservoir at tc so that means the entropy of the surroundings decrease during this uh, part of the process and then a certain amount of heat qc is rejected to the surroundings by the engine during another part of the cycle which means entropy of the uh, surroundings go up during this part of the cycle so that is plus qc over uh, th so delta s universe is delta s system plus delta s surroundings and you can see that this is equal to qc times 1 over th minus 1 over tc uh, again this quantity since th is uh, greater than tc this quantity comes out to be negative which violates the principle of increase of entropy so any engine that violates the uh, clausius statement also violates the principle of increase of entropy the last one thermodynamic temperature scale so here we are looking at a carnot engine so let's just sketch the uh, pv diagram ts diagram anything is okay so let's say that uh, this is a carnot engine that operates between reservoirs th and tc direct engine that operates like this so delta s for the system is zero because uh, the carnot engine is executing a cyclic process so delta s system as usual is equal to zero delta s surroundings a certain amount of heat qh is supplied at temperature th and a certain amount of heat qc is rejected uh, at temperature tc so the entropy of the surroundings decreases when heat is supplied to the system and the entropy of the surroundings increases when heat is rejected uh by the system so the change in entropy of the universe delta s universe is delta s system plus surroundings which is equal to this and since there are no internal or external irreversibilities 
Remember, we are talking about a Carno engine with no internal or external irreversibilities. The entropy change of the universe should be 0. So, Q h over T h equal to Q c over T c. So, the thermodynamic temperature scale definition of that is also consistent with the principle of increase of entropy. So, what we will uh, do in the uh, next lecture is to work out uh, examples which involve uh, calculation of uh, entropy change and um, uh, and as a result we will calculate or and from that we will calculate entropy generated in the universe as a result of the process that uh, that we look at. So, we will do several examples and calculate entropy change for each process and then evaluate entropy change of the universe as a result of each one of these processes. So, in this lecture we will um, uh, work out a few examples uh, that demonstrate the uh, uh, principle of increase of entropy where we will calculate the entropy change of the system plus surroundings. Now, before we do that let us just take a, a, a final look at this expression. So, here we have shown that uh, d s inverse is uh, made up of two terms. One is uh, this term here which is due to external irreversibility and the other one is this term which is due to internal irreversibility. Now, notice that both these actually are uh, entropy generation terms. So, this is also entropy generation this term uh, denotes entropy generation due to external uh, irreversibility and this is as we have already discussed entropy generation due to internal irreversibility in the system. So, in fact, what we can uh, actually say is that you know this itself may be uh, interpreted as um, as an entropy generation uh, in the universe. For instance, we may write it like this. So, we say that this is delta sigma int and this entire term may be written as delta sigma e x t denoting external irreversibilities and instead of writing it as d s universe we may actually interpret this and write this as delta sigma which is the total entropy generated in the universe due to internal irreversibility in a system and external irreversibility due to its interactions with the surroundings. Notice that the external irreversibility is uh, coming from the I mean is coming from the interaction of the system with the surroundings. Okay. So, it is external to the system, but it is a consequence of the interaction of the system with its surroundings. Okay. So, in that sense it is connected to the system, it is external to the system, but it is a consequence of the interactions of the system with the surroundings. So, we may actually write this term as delta sigma. Uh, which uh, essentially says that this is entropy generated in the universe as a result of the process that the system undergoes. So, the system undergoes a certain process and there is a certain amount of entropy generated uh, due to the internal irreversibility and there is a certain amount of entropy generated due to external irreversibility. These two together contribute to the change in universe of the system or alternatively we may say that this is the amount of entropy that is generated in the universe. So, in fact, this is the notation that we will use in our examples. We will say uh, that sigma is equal to so much which means that this is entropy change in the universe or entropy generation in the universe. Okay, That is what we are uh, going to do and this is actually a um, uh, let us say an interesting and quite powerful way of interpreting this particular expression here that since both these are entropy generation terms the entropy change of the universe is actually nothing but entropy generated in the universe due to internal ex and external irreversibilities. That is how we are we will interpret this. The uh, first example that uh, we are going to look at uh, reads like this. So, we have a steel casting whose uh, specific heat is given and the mass is uh, 20 kilogram at 200 degrees Celsius. So, it is to be cooled to the room temperature which is 27 degrees Celsius. We do this in uh, different stages. So, initially the casting at 200 degrees Celsius is kept in a furnace that is maintained at 140 degrees Celsius. So, once it is uh, the temperature of the casting reaches 140 degrees Celsius, we take it out and put it in a water bath. Uh, this is not an infinite water bath, this is a water bath with a finite mass 80 kilograms of water which is initially at the room temperature. So, we put the casting at 140 degrees Celsius in the water bath and then allow it to cool down. 
since the uh, water bath is of a finite mass, the final temperature, there will be an increase in temperature of the water bath as the uh, casting cools down. So, it cools down to a certain temperature. Once it is uh, at that temperature, we then take it out and allow it to cool in the ambient uh, air which is at 27 degrees Celsius. Okay? We are asked to calculate the entropy generated during this process. So, that would be sigma. Okay? Entropy generated due to internal plus external irreversibilities and the system here is the casting. Okay? So, we take the casting as the system and calculate its entropy change and, cal and treat the rest of the, uh, uh, the universe as the surrounding. So, initially the part of the universe that interacts with the casting is the furnace. Then the part of the universe that interacts with the system is the water bath. Then it is the ambient. So, we are doing this in three stages. So, step 1 delta S system for step 1 may be calculated quite easily. The casting cools from 200 degrees Celsius to 140 degrees Celsius. And because it is losing heat, the entropy of the system decreases. Now, from first law, we can easily calculate the amount of heat that is uh, uh, lost by the system that is nothing but mass of the system times its specific heat capacity times change in temperature. So, 600 kilo, kilojoules of heat is transferred to the surrounding. So, the entropy of the surrounding increases. Okay? So, the surroundings uh, are at a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius. In fact, the furnace is at a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius and 600 kilojoules of heat is transferred to the furnace. So, that means the uh, entropy change in the surroundings is positive in this step. Okay? So, in the next step, we take the, the casting and put it in the water bath. Okay? The final temperature of the bath plus the system may be determined by using first law. So, if you apply first law to the bath plus the casting delta E equal to delta U, no change in Ke or Pe is equal to Q minus W, uh, W is 0, there is no displacement or uh, any other form of work. So, uh, we can easily calculate and delta U is nothing but delta U uh, casting plus delta U uh, of the bath. Since delta U is M times C times delta T because this is a casting is a solid, the bath uh, which is water is uh, actually a liquid. So, we can easily calculate the final temperature of the bath to be 30.266 degrees Celsius. So, the bath initially was at 27 degrees Celsius. As a result of putting the casting which is at a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius into the bath, its temperature increases, which means that the casting now is cooled from 140 to, uh, to 30.266 and the bath, uh, temperature of the bath increases from uh, 27 to 30.266. So, delta S for the casting may be evaluated based on its uh, initial temperature which is 140 degrees Celsius and the final temperature which is 30.266. And the surroundings in this case is the bath. So, the change in entropy of the surroundings may be evaluated based on its initial temperature and final temperature. Okay? Since heat is transferred to the surroundings, the entropy change of the system is negative and uh, since the surroundings receive uh, heat, the entropy change of the surroundings is positive. Step 3. The casting is now taken out of the water bath and uh, allowed to cool in the ambient. Okay? So, its temperature changes from 30.26 to 266 to 27 degrees Celsius. Again, heat is lost to the ambient. So, the entropy of the casting decreases. And the amount of heat that is lost to the surroundings may be easily calculated by applying first law. So, the Q comes out to be equal to delta U which is nothing but M times C. Uh, times uh, C of the casting times uh, delta T. So, this uh, much heat is transferred to the surrounding 32.66 kilojoules. So, the entropy change of the surroundings may be evaluated like this. Since the temperature of the surroundings remains a constant, you may evaluate this simply as Q over T naught. Now, the total entropy generated during the process may be evaluated quite easily as total entropy change for the system plus total entropy change for the surroundings. Okay? So, we add them up algebraically 
and we end up with a positive number 0 0.6469 as we should because entropy of the, of the universe increases or at best remains the same. So, sigma should always be positive and we get this to be 0 0.6469. So, this is actually the entropy change of the universe or alternatively the entropy that is generated in the universe as a result of this quenching process. The next example is um, uh, something that we have looked at earlier. Uh, you may recall uh, that um, a 2 kg of air that was contained in a piston uh, cylinder assembly uh, was compressed from 100 kPa to 800 kPa. It is initially at a temperature of uh, 300 Kelvin and it underwent a polytropic process. Exponent was also given. Uh, so, we are now asked to calculate the amount of entropy generated in the universe as a result of this polytropic process. So, we uh, considered the air to be the system and we will continue to do that. The final temperature of the air was uh, determined to be 467 Kelvin and the heat that was uh, transferred to the ambient was minus 116.06 Kelvin, I am sorry 116.06 kilojoules. So, taking the air as the system, we may evaluate delta S for the system using this formula since the uh, final temperatures and final, final temperature and final pressure uh, are both known, we may evaluate the change in uh, entropy of the uh, system. Since heat is lost by the system, its entropy decreases as seen from this negative sign. The surroundings uh, comprise of the ambient at uh, 300 Kelvin. So, the uh, entropy change of the surroundings may be evaluated as Q surroundings divided by T naught and this comes out to be plus 386.87 joule per Kelvin because uh, heat is transferred to the surroundings it, its entropy increases. So, the entropy change of the universe delta S universe is nothing but entropy that is generated which is equal to delta S cis plus delta S surroundings and that comes out to be plus 80.56 joule per Kelvin. Okay. The um, last example that we will uh, look at uh, in this um, uh, on this topic is this 5 kg of saturated R134A vapor at minus 15 degrees Celsius is contained in a rigid vessel. The R134A is stirred by transferring an amount of work equal to 500 kilojoules. So, basically uh, we have R134A in a rigid vessel and we have a stirrer and um, uh, it is initially at minus 15 degrees Celsius saturated vapor and uh, we transfer an amount of work 500 kilojoules by uh, stirring and simultaneously heat transfer to the ambient also takes place. So, the ambient is at 30 degrees Celsius, it is also losing heat to the ambient as the stirring uh, process takes place. Note that initially the R134A vapor is at minus 15 degrees Celsius. So, it actually is at a temperature less than the ambient temperature, but as we stir it, its temperature increases. Stirring is a highly irreversible process, its temperature increases. So, there will be heat loss from uh, the uh, R134A to the surroundings, and we take this to be our system. So, the initial state it is given that it is a saturated vapor at minus 15 degrees Celsius. So, we may easily retrieve property values from the temperature table specific volume, specific internal energy and specific entropy. At the final uh, state again two property values are known temperature is given to be 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, since the volume of the vessel is constant specific volume also remains constant. So, V2 equal to V1 equal to 0 0.12066 and temperature is also known. So, and we can easily show that this is a superheated uh, state by noticing that or by noting that V2 is greater than Vg at 30 degrees Celsius. So, we can retrieve specific internal energy and specific entropy from the superheated tables. Now, we have already uh, shown that we uh, uh, have taken the R134A in the vessel as our system. If you apply first law, we get 
delta E equal to delta U equal to Q minus W, no change in KE or PE. So, Q may be evaluated like this. Notice that W here is terror work, PDV work is absent because the volume is constant and 500 kilojoules is supplied which means W is minus 500. So, we get the <coughs> heat loss from the system to the surroundings as minus 332.45 kilojoules. Entropy change in the system may be evaluated as m times the change in the specific entropy. So, that comes out to be plus 0.599 kilojoule per Kelvin. Okay. Notice that although uh, heat is being lost by the system to the surroundings, its entropy still increases because of the uh, internal irreversibility which is stirring. Okay. So, the internal irreversibility is so high that the entropy increases in spite of the fact that heat is uh, lost to the ambient. Okay. So, the entropy generation due to internal irreversibility is very, very high. So, delta S system comes out to be positive in this case and delta S surroundings may be easily evaluated as the heat that is transferred to the surroundings. Since heat is transferred to the surroundings, the entropy of the surroundings uh, increases. So, it is uh, Q divided by uh, T uh, T naught in Kelvin, so 273 plus 30. So, the total change in entropy of the universe delta S universe is same as entropy generated in the universe and that comes out to be a positive number 1.6962. So, heat is lost to the surroundings as a result of which the temperature of the surroundings increases and its entropy, I am sorry, uh, heat is lost to the surroundings as a result of which the entropy of the surroundings increases. Although heat is lost to the surroundings from the system, its entropy still goes up because of the internal irreversibility associated with the stirring work. So, the entropy of the system increases, entropy of the surroundings also increases. So, we have a very uh, special process here where the system uh, temporary, the entropy of the system increases and the uh, entropy of the surroundings also increases and so we have total entropy of the universe uh, increasing as a result of both this. This is somewhat unusual because uh, when a system is losing heat to the surroundings, usually the entropy of the system will go down as we would expect. If you recall ds is delta q, ds for a system is delta q over t plus delta sigma int. So, when delta q is negative, we usually expect ds to go down unless delta sigma int is so uh, high and positive that the overall entropy increases which is what is happening in this case. So, this is very high and positive, this is less than 0, but the sum eventually comes out to be greater than 0. 